And welcome back to the Dino Bidala Show. So happy to have back on our friend who's working on a new book, Mary Trump, also the author of the best-selling book, Too Much and Never Enough, How My Family Created the World's Most Dangerous Man, the book The Reckoning. She's an activist, and her Substack is like every hour I'm getting articles. It's marytrump.substack.com, and it's really good stuff. Like you're literally, like there are news things that you post about that Donald or court's happening that I didn't even see in the news, and I see it because uh, I subscribe. So thanks for being on, taking a few minutes from writing. Dude, it's it's actually really good to see you. It's been so long. I mean, I, I don't mean actually as if it's not always good to see you, but it's been a while. So it has. It, it's good to see your face. And uh your your substack is pretty awesome too. So people thank you. It's not your but it's well. it's fine. I enjoy it. But your buddies Jen come on and Brian come on. Brian comes on every other week and Jen's a regular now on the show. Yeah. I poach people from the Nerd Avengers. Well, I, as I, long as I can have joint custody, sure. uh, it's fine. I don't want exclusive custody either. They're nice, but neither too much work, both of them. Well, you know, the maintenance and all that. So let's talk about a few things. Uh, one, oh, this is just kind of fun. Uh, James Carville today said that Donald Trump has some sores on his hand because I've asked a number of doctors what manifests himself through sores on the hand. And he said the answer is immediate and human- unanimous, secondary syphilis. And just for fun... <laughs> Any, what do you think? Is there a chance? Well, there, of, of course, there's a chance. <laughs> um, I, I think the 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 real answer is probably much, but much more boring. Um, <clears throat> as as some people may know, Donald plays golf on occasion, mm-hmm. uh, especially if the American taxpayer is footing the bill, and uh, as. Maybe people don't know. Uh, he's terrible at it. Oh. This is the only time in my life I have felt the tiniest bit of compassion for Donald because, like, I don't like to do things unless I can get better at them. Imagine how depressing it would be to spend as much time as he spends playing golf and never get better at it. So I think it's more likely that he just he doesn't know how to swing a golf club after sixty years of of trying, and he just says golf club blisters or something but syphilis would be good it's interesting the the thing about golf there's no doubt every time he plays he play he claims he shot under par because it's all rigged the Mm -hmm. golf course was rigged against me they move the holes it's too much so i couldn't even yeah if you had to play golf with me you just have to play the entire time you're sucking up to the idiot that's what he would want so on a more serious note um donald is and i don't talk about the iowa caucus but he demanded today full immunity, even for things that, quote, cross the line. So now he's putting in writing, and as a lawyer, I would recommend against this, but he did. He even put in writing that I should get immunity even for the crimes I've committed. That's what this is now. And I guess he was subtly saying that, but to put it all caps on Truth Social is different. Why do you think he did that? Well, a couple of reasons. One, he has no impulse control, as we saw uh, in the courtroom yesterday, which mm-hmm. was just an, an appalling performance. I mean, the same thing in, in Judge Angoron's uh, courtroom. Uh, Judge Kaplan, I think, did a little more to rein Donald in, but it was yeah. still quite depressing to see the lengths he's allowed to go. Um, you know, uh, so I think part of it is a combination between his idea of strategy, but also not having a lot of impulse control anymore. Um, I I also uh, think that the, the main thing that's going on here, and this is the, the strategy part, is Donald has actually, believe it or not, um, there are things he's good at. They're not good things to be good at, but he's good I'm at good finding good. weak people uh, to use, and he's good at pushing the envelope. So we've seen this trend, this now seven, eight years long trend where he tries something outrageous and if he gets by, if he gets away with it, he the next time he tries mm-hmm. something even a little more outrageous and we've seen that there's been practically no pushback. So, you know, during the uh, campaign in 2015, 15 or I guess it was probably 2016 by that point. Um, And I think it was still for the Republican nominating contest. He said 
I could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue. And he didn't say, and get away with it. He said, and people would still vote for me. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now he's saying, and I could get away with it. So that's a very starkly different kind of power play. And that's a great analysis because you're absolutely right. Because people have often misquoted him from his comment on Fifth Avenue that he can get away with it. No, he said, and I wouldn't lose any supporters. That's just what he said. And right. now, and he was right about that, but now he wants to get away with it. Uh, Elena Haba, the lawyer, misses Donald Trump the fourth. What do you think? You think he's, I mean, listen, are you beginning invitation to a wedding in the near future? <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I think that's highly unlikely. Um, okay. But, you know, we just learned that his pack, not him, you know, he's got his, uh, his rubes paying for his legal bills. She's gotten, well over $2.3 million for her quote unquote legal services. Wow. Um, and she seems to be using a good bit of that money to uh, look more like Melania. Um, so I, I mean, I, I wouldn't put anything past her because clearly nobody else would hire this woman because she is so incompetent. As so Brian Cameron and I, her right. next career move is to do marry Donald. It could be as Brian Cameron and I both, expressed unfortunately she shares our arab heritage she's of arab heritage uh and you're like uh you know couldn't it be like a good arab instead we have alina haba who's not objectively not a good lawyer if you read the transcript of what's going on in court that's been tweeted she's literally getting l trial litigate i used to be a litigator litigation 101 tips like how to introduce a, a document into evidence like are you kidding me you don't even know. I, I judge. think she's better. I, it, it's yep. it, and honestly, I don't think it means that she's not a good lawyer. She's just not this kind of lawyer. Right, she's not a litigator. Right, she's more of a court, like hanging out in the country club, hanging out with Donald Trump and in the grill room, which I had with Mary Trump. So, Mary, when you touched on, you know, Donald got a lot of press yesterday for ranting against the judge. From your sense, what's the end game? Like, what's the strategy? Is it purely getting press, showing he's tough? Is it sort of what you're saying, testing out what he can get away with? with now in federal court, because he's going to have his criminal trial in federal courts, the most likely one would be before Judge Chutkin. What do you think the game is here? I think some of it is just an assertion of dominance and knowing that, uh, <laughs> and I, I say knowing based on his experience, knowing that the judge is likely going, not going to sanction him in any meaningful way. You know, I think and Goron gave him what, like a $10,000 fine. And that's like, for you and me, that's like, the change we have under our couch cushion for him, right? right. Uh, so um, it's also though uh, we we often hear people say that that Donald's lawyers are performing for an audience of one, and Donald's perform performing uh, for an audience of his base. Uh, so that coupled with his very real and valid sense of impunity. Mm -hmm. uh, because I don't care what anybody says, the guy's still walking free. He's still running for the presidency. He's still, he's going to win the Republican nomination. In what way exactly uh, has he been impinged upon at all by the justice system? I mean, it's, uh, it's absolutely absurd. So why wouldn't he feel like he could get away with that? But I think that something that's getting lost uh, that I really think we need to remind people of, because to me, uh, it's the most important thing, not just to somebody who considers herself and is lucky enough to be E. Jean Carroll's friend, mm -hmm. but as as an American. Um, this man went into that courtroom yesterday to intimidate an 80-year-old woman whom he raped 20 years ago. That's that's who mil tens of millions of Americans are supporting. It's vile. And the more he does, the more they love Every, anything he does. We've never seen this. This is, it makes it makes little sense in how our understanding of politics works. But from cults or fascist movements and authoritarian movements, it makes more sense that way. It's you know you mentioned Donald walks free. We've had conversations in the past. If it ends at the Donald Trump's trials never happened before election day, that you go back and look at Merrick Garland as as the reason for all of this. Uh, with a huge assist from Eileen Cannon. Oh, yes. Uh, who has <clears throat> the easiest case in the sense of um, it's explanatory, like how easy it is to explain to a jury um, 
how damning the evidence is. You know, it's it's as close as you're going to get to a slam dunk because just like uh, January 6th, uh, not January 6th, sorry, just like Georgia and those phone calls to Brad Raffensperger, we we saw Donald committing the crime in real time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think she gets a lot of the credit as well. But yeah, sure. Uh, Merrick Garland, man, what a what a missed opportunity. And I think, Dean, in the end, uh, if we do lose our democracy, it's not going to be largely the fault of people like Donald and his sycophants and enablers. It's going to be because uh, people on our side just didn't understand what was happening. And even though they had the power to do something about it, they chose not to. For the life of me, I don't understand. I mean, the most innocent ex explanation for Merrick Garland's delay is he just wanted Donald to go away. He just hoped he would just go away and fade away and he would never have to deal with a political figure. That's the most innocent. There's more. Uh, you can do a spectrum of reasons yeah. why he did it. That's the only one that you're like, well, all right, I, I could see that. He was a former judge. He has, well, I don't want to deal with politicians. This guy's going to disappear. But what a mistake. At least he should have appointed a special counsel on day one. And that would have set such a tone. Imagine how America would have been different. And, and the GOP perhaps would have been different if he gets sworn in in March 2021. And right. Trump had just, Donald had just been at CPAC two weeks before and goes, the guy's running. I have to appoint a special counsel. We would have had charges one year from then. The trials would have been over. Trump, Donald would have been convicted by now and probably close to being sentenced, if not sentenced right now. That's what would have happened. Yeah, I, I think it's very possible. And again, this isn't the only thing that was happening, but uh, that the Republican Party was waiting for Garland and Garland was waiting for the Republican Party. You know, they each wanted the other to bail him out, and uh, neither one, neither the Republican Party nor Merrick Garland had the guts to do what was right. They just wanted somebody else to to do uh, the work for them, um, because you know uh, <laughs> we um, are now in this situation where we are long past time where there's I like I don't. I can't think of anything at this point that the Republican Party would do or that Merrick Garland can do to fix this. No, no, he, he can't. <clears throat> the best thing he did was appoint Jack Smith. It was the delay in doing that. That's the issue. And I'm chatting with our friend Mary Trump. So, Mary, you mentioned a little earlier that Donald will be the nominee. Is this just performance art, what we're doing with the New Hampshire primary? There's no way, in your view, Nikki Haley can beat him there. Uh, <clears throat> and even if she does, uh, I don't. Think, I mean, you know, I guess it would be a two day story, um, right. but it it wouldn't really matter because uh, New Hampshire allows crossover voting. Uh, so, I mean, look, I don't think Iowa mattered either. Like, I, I think um, we're we're just sort of slow walking our way into another Biden Donald rematch. Um, and what's at the end of the day, what's going to matter is uh how weak donald is um and how we can change the narrative because uh, as as you know as well uh than anybody and better than most the corporate media is not going to do that for us no they're in this for the ratings and the revenue that's the big part of it it's so if donald Look, we're not Republicans, so we don't know for sure, but I just want to get your take. Say Donald was convicted. Say the January 6th case happened, not in March, but say April or May, and he's convicted of four felonies by, say, July, which is possible, before the GOP convention. Do you think enough Republicans then would go like, we cannot have a guy who's a convicted felon as our nominee, or do you think he's ride with him to the end? It doesn't matter. No, and, and <clears throat> I think um, one of the awful things that we have to contend with is that um, the crimes he's convicted of and uh, the crime he's been actually found liable for, uh, the rape of E. Jean Carroll, mm -hmm. uh, are things that in basically increase his street cred with his base because uh, they're a bunch of misogynistic monsters. And the Republican Party has convinced the significant the very significant percentage of Republicans that uh, the January 6 felons who are seditionist and 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 tried to assist in overturning our government uh, are hostages. And you know, so 
those two narratives um, will only help Donald if he gets convicted in, in the J6 case, for example. I think the only case <laughs> that that could dent his uh, standing with the party is the documents case. <laughs> uh, but as we know, that ain't happening. No, Judge Cannon, she should sit at the defense table with Donald Trump's lawyers at this point. She, she is not at all. She's not what a judge is. It's just remarkable. No. The, you, you're friends with Eugene Carroll. Um, you don't have to share any, anything, but how is she doing? I mean, is she she's back in court. Alina Hobb is asking her dumb questions. Donald is there glaring at her and muttering loudly enough so the jury could hear so the judge had to instruct him to stop doing that. Um, is she... Is there any sense of like, hey, good, this here's finally I'm getting justice. This guy's now in the courtroom with me. Um, or is it just painful, this whole experience? Listen, uh, she doesn't need this. You know, she she should she's earned the right to just be done with it, to be home without getting death threats every day simply for telling the truth. Uh, and, you know, I haven't spoken to her, but because you know she's busy right um but if i were in her position the fact that donald was allowed to be there in the way he was i would find offensive uh you know i i don't think that uh i mean, I, I don't know what judge kaplan's options were but mm -hmm. i i don't necessarily think that donald should have been removed although I also don't think that anybody should, any judge should take in consideration whether or not that would be good for Donald's election prospects. Kick him out of the fucking courtroom. If he's being that disruptive, disrespectful, and threatening. Um, but I certainly would have fined him $5 million every time a word came out of his mouth. Like that might have made a difference. I don't know. So um, the good news is that uh, Eugene is is unlike uh donald <laughs> is beloved and uh she has a phenomenal team around her mm -hmm. uh supporting her every step of the way um but i'm quite relieved that she was done testifying today and and i'm also a point you made i couldn't agree with more and it's something i said to msnbc legal analyst danny savalas comes up every week we do a law thing and i said I, I don't want, like, Judge Kaplan's like, I know you want me to throw you out. And the reason he won't throw him out is because he believes in his mind Trump wants to throw him out. It's going to help him politically. I just want Donald to be treated like anyone else. And if you weren't going to throw him out, anyone else does that, you don't. And if you were going to throw that person out, if it wasn't named Donald Trump, do that. It doesn't matter if it helps him politically. I don't care what victimhood he uses. We have to have one standard. And to me, the most aggravating thing through all of this is the special treatment he's gotten in every case, every everywhere. And it is so unnerving. It's corrosive to our justice system because the rest of us see it. We all know what's going on. Rich white guy gets a different standard than the rest of America. And it's outrageous. So look, at the end of the day, I don't think the judge would have thrown a defendant out. It's a civil case. It's not criminal. I don't think they would throw them out for one outburst. Uh, but if he did more than that, yes, I think they would have. It's, I just, the fact that he's not in awaiting his trials in custody is the biggest injustice right in all of our faces. No one else is charged with 30 plus counts of espionage and walks around the United States of America. Nope, doesn't happen. And here's where you're running are. for president. It is surreal. It's got to be Don't honest. Don't try right? that this, at home. This is, this is from with Mary Trump. Uh, last couple of things, and I want to talk about your new campaign. Look, there's, a, there's so much talk about what if Donald gets back in office about what he'll do, dictator for day, blah, 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 you know, that kind of stuff. In your heart, what do you, what's the biggest concern you have if he gets back in and what he would do I, I mean it's not one thing it, the, the biggest concern is that he gets back in and democracy's over the american experiment has failed and uh if enough people vote for him and we haven't done anything in the meantime to fix the system and you know because if he did if he were to get in uh it, he would likely lose by millions of votes and he would get in uh j just like 2016 uh, by the Electoral College. He would lose by a larger popular vote margin this time, for sure. Right. Um, but, you know, if that's if if we haven't done the work uh, to fix the system, uh, just as we haven't uh, done the work to fix the Supreme Court, 
um, then that's it. And, you know, people like you and I will have to figure out where else to live, basically. I know. Uh, there's very real concerns that even I think Joe Scarborough was talking about it recently. And I, my friend Glenn Kirshner, I think, you know, Glenn mm -hmm. was talking about it very seriously. Like if he were to win and Ellie Mastal, that yep. they might have to think about going someplace else because there's a chance the DOJ would go in there, especially Ellie. I mean, they've said Ellie's name yep. by name on, on social media by his his high level acolytes, not just minions of Trump that are on social media, like real people connected to him. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? And we're going to talk about your campaign you just kicked off. But before that, how are you feeling about President Biden? What more would you like to see from him? I mean, it's a long time to the elections, 290 something days. We want him to be in full election mode right now. I know that. But what would you what are you thinking so far and what more do you want to see? I, I, I have to be honest with you. Um, I don't I'm at the point right now where I do not understand how anybody can criticize Biden for anything. I'm not saying that he hasn't made missteps, that he hasn't handled some things very badly uh, and very differently from how I would want. But guys, all you need to do is think of the alternative. Uh, you know, um, it's and no nobody who's in the Oval Office is going to be 100 percent aligned with what any of us wants. Uh, and to those who say that, you know, he's too old, uh, one, look at Donald, who's uh, essentially the same age. But, you know, if you voted for Biden when he was 76 years old and you didn't realize how time worked, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, but we have two old white guys and that's down to America. You know, <laughs> it's like if we because we keep playing on the left, we keep playing it safe. We keep thinking, oh, you know, we need we need a white man or we need um somebody older uh, to compete. Well, no. Uh, and I think unless and until we're willing to recognize how greatly this, this country's demographics have shifted and, and again, also deal with the, um, the, the systematic inequality uh, mm -hmm. in terms of voting rights and gerrymandering and voter suppression and voter subversion, you know, we're just going to have to keep walking that fine line and we're never, we're never going to accomplish anything. You know, we're just going to keep fighting the same fight every four years. That's not really where we should where we should be. We should be trying to make this country better, a better, stronger democracy for everybody. But we, we keep having to fight our rear flank. So as far as Biden goes, I listen, he's the nominee. I will support him with every ounce of my being. Uh, because, you know, it's not a choice between Joe Biden and I i don't even know. Name, name your progressive. No, there is nobody, right? He's a nominee. He's our guy. He's it. He's yeah, it. It's it. not going to be Marianne Williamson or Cornell West or that some guy named Dean, not who's not you. Dean Phillips. Um, if you were running, that would be a different story entirely. Different, of course. I... Yes. Uh, but some, you know, some rich white guy who thinks he's entitled to run because he's a rich white guy. Right. Uh, it's Joe Biden. He's our president. He's our nominee. That's it. That's the, like that's the end of the discussion, honestly. Um, because anytime anybody says anything against him, it's not that I disagree. You have to think about how exponentially worse it would be if Donald won. That's it. Uh, I agree. And also with the Democratic presidential administration, uh, we can have access. We can change policy. We have an impact on on influencing things. With a Donald Trump, we're just shut out. We we don't even exist. So a lot. So you just kicked off a campaign though to defeat Donald Trump. You posted on on Substack, and you want people to get involved. Please share a little bit about this before we wrap up. Yeah. First of all, I just want to say really quickly: if you have a problem with Biden, then work work even harder to get us bigger majorities in the Senate and take over the House by sixty seats. There you go. What? Right, problem. and then we can pass everything we want. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah, so so it's it's pretty exciting, obviously, early days. And, and I was going to do this earlier, but I, I'm working on a, a project with a very scary deadline. So I don't have 100 percent of um, my energy yet to, to to dedicate to it. But essentially, uh, I mean, campaign in, in the loose sense of the word, I'll just be I'll be ramping up uh, the amount of I'm writing, I'll be, uh, you know, putting together live gigs, uh, hopefully with uh, the help of the Nerd Avengers um, in swing states and in blue dots and red seas and 
just, you know, doing everything we can uh, to inform people and educate them about what's at stake because the corporate media is literally just focusing on, on the horse race. Uh, yep. So I think too many people just don't have access to the information they need to know what the stakes are. So uh, yeah, it's just, it's gonna, we're just gonna put it together, a coalition of amazing people like you. And I'm just, I'm co-opting you without even asking. I got drafted. I mean, um, that's it. And we're just gonna work until the election has been called for uh, President Joe Biden. That sounds great. And if people wanna sign up but not get drafted, where can they actually go to sign up? Well, we're not quite there yet. Okay. Um, Again, I have this deadline I need to, to put. Behind. Fair enough. Uh, but you know, I'll um, I'll be keeping people posted on my Substack, which is called The Good in Us. Just Google Mary Trump Substack, and also on uh, Twitter, which still has some some utility. Yes. Yeah. You know. It does when you have a following. Mary does. It's effective. So if you go to Mary Trump dot substack dot com or the good in us you can sign up her newsletter is free and then you'll find out all information about the campaign she's going to wage well mary thanks so much for being on and, and i appreciate your time i know you're really crazily busy and have a great weekend if i don't talk to you i probably won't talk to you until after the have a great weekend all right it's great to great to see you dean